Welcome to worship as we gather together across the Staffordshire Moorlands. We come to God as we are with our gifts, skills and talents, those that are overused and those yet to be discovered. We come to rest in God's presence, to simply be who we are and to be loved without condition. We come to praise and worship the one who sets a seal upon our hearts. We sing the hymn, all people that on earth do dwell. Let us come to God in prayer. God at work in creation, establishing a community of love and justice, acceptance and hope. We, we wish you. you. God at work in Jesus, building your kingdom through touch, teaching and challenge. We, we wish you. you. God at work in the spirit, transforming our experience into sacred moments. We, we wish you. you. God at work in joy and peace, in subtlety and challenge, you welcome us into your kingdom, where the guide and the rule is your open-ended love, freely given and expressed to all. 
Your love calls and draws us to your presence where filled with awe we find our place of belonging and wonder. We worship you. The kingdom of heaven is so like the world around us but often we don't quite make it. We lack commitment, compassion and imagination to see how things could change, how your presence could be made known, how the endless possibilities of your kingdom can become our reality. So people lack purpose, people starve, people are rejected, people face death alone. Loving God. Forgive us. God who accepts us as we are, encourages us to use our strengths for good, unites us with others and sets us on a new path. We are forgiven. forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We worship God with the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from evil. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the, king, the, the power, power, and the and glory, glory are, are yours. yours now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. 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 For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labour for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain, and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that through my being with you again, your joy in Christ Jesus will overflow on account of me. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the Gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come and see you, or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, contending as one for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for him, since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. A reading from Matthew chapter 20 verses 1 to 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire labourers for his wine yard. After agreeing with the labourers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his wine yard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the wine yard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the wine yard. 
When the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Take or take me as I am. Blessed are you poor who have no work or too little income. God has promised yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you who are hungry now. God has promised you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep over unpaid bills, the lack of a job or your children's lack of opportunities. God has promised you shall be comforted, you shall laugh. Blessed are you who are merciful. God has promised you shall receive mercy. Blessed are you who hunger and thirst for justice. God has promised you shall be filled. The, the time, time is surely coming when God's, God's justice and peace shall, shall reign throughout the, the land. land. Thanks be to God. We sing together the hymn, O oh, the Life of the World. Changing 
In another place, the worship band were leading worship and the song reflected the sentiment that, for to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. The sentiment disturbed the organist. I wondered how many other people had actually read what they were singing. I notice sometimes in worship, particularly people at Trinity, they do look at the words they are expected to speak or sing, and I notice a reaction. I think that is a good thing. We do need to think about our faith as well as respond with our hearts. This letter that Paul has written is believed to have been written while Paul was in prison. The circumstances of any situation can have an effect on what we write or say or do. Perhaps Paul's sentiment was based on his experience. I'm not convinced that the motivation for faith or following Christ should be about whatever happens at or after death. And I think the more important aspects of the reading encourages the people of Philippi to live now in a manner that is worthy of the gospel. I suspect that is what we all try to do, to remember the love that was shown in Jesus and the way he treated those who had run into trouble or illness, his challenges to the religious elite, his compassion for and his profound understanding of the worth of every person, and his deep faith in the nurturing God he called Father. Some of these aspects we see develop over the stories within the Gospel, but by the time of the crucifixion, these seem to be the values which strengthen Jesus. What Paul seems most of all to be influenced by, despite his physical circumstances, is his devotion to Jesus. He sees his suffering as part of his faith in Jesus and tries to encourage the Philippians, who equally seem to be facing some kind of trouble, to keep on in their faith. Maybe when people of faith face a life-threatening scenario, then maybe his words, living is Christ and dying is gain, is offered as a comfort, a hope, a peace. But the important aspect of living a life in a manner worthy of the gospel here and now should never be overlooked. Near the altar in Iona Abbey are two carvings. One is of a monkey and the other is of a cat. They are now quite warm. When I used to do tours of the abbey, we paused at the carvings and reflected on them. It was quite profound for the Celtic Christians to recognise the need to bring both the busyness of life and therefore the world of work represented by the monkey and the contemplation of life and the need for rest represented by the cat to God. I wonder how often we think about the world of work in our worship and how often we bring it to God. We often ask children, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'm beginning to think it is not a good question to ask. It suggests the whole of our identity is tied up in our job, whatever job that is. It is inevitable that some jobs are more valued than others and many children never end up being the astronaut or ballerina that they dreamed of. For many, the job is a means to an end, to pay the bills. But equally, the person who cleans the toilets may feel a deep sense of call to the work they do. And it is an important job. Perhaps it is a good job. We are not all the same. During lockdown, particularly during the weekly clap at the beginning, we were encouraged to show our appreciation of the NHS workers and other frontline workers. It was on the whole, I think, a genuine appreciation. But will that extend to their pay? Some jobs seem well overpaid for what they actually do. I remember hearing someone justify a professional footballer's pay, saying they had to retire in their 30s. Other people at a similar age who see one career ending have to go and find another job. Other issues with jobs have been highlighted during this time. The furloughing scheme was introduced to help prevent job losses as a result of the pandemic. Over recent weeks, we have seen a lot of job losses and the prediction is of more to come. I wonder how many of the issues around our job and job securities were beginning to be a problem long before the pandemic started. The story we have heard is one of the reasons we should be concerned. Jesus highlights some principles that are real within God's kingdom, but not necessarily evident in the structures and systems we have in place. The pay is made on the person who worked for only one hour, based on what that person needs to live. Not on the amount of time spent working. That is implied to be the right thing to do. The people who had worked all day were also paid based on what they needed. So all were paid the same. Is the principle based on what is needed to live? The value therefore is not 
in what the people do, but simply in their being. The story tells us that these people have been waiting to be hired all day, but no one would give them a job. It is implied not to be their fault or their lack of willingness. A friend I had in college really struggled with the concept of a deathbed confession. He felt he was struggling to follow Jesus and people who hadn't bothered throughout their life could then be accepted by God at the last minute. He felt this to be a travesty. And the concept of a generous God is what we lose. And the concept that generosity is the example we should follow. We will ignore his concept of a God who rejects or accepts people until another time. The story follows on from the encounter where the rich young man asks Jesus what deed he can do to inherit eternal life. He leaves disappointed. It was a simple instruction given to sell his belongings and give the money to the poor. But I think even today we have an activity-based understanding of faith. It becomes about what we do, what we can earn, not about who we are, and how who we are is evident in the way we live. And who are we? According to the Gospel, we are children of the generous, grace-filled God who chooses the side of humanity. I heard someone preach at the General Assembly a few years ago who said we all need to be loved and to know we are capable of giving love. The generosity of God, summed up in the treatment of the workers, suggests it is about our needs, not what we think we deserve. I suspect many workers think their pay does not adequately reflect the job they do. I spoke to someone some years ago who said she thought she wasn't paid enough for the job she did. She had been able to reduce her working hours and to do an art course and still managed to live adequately. She had holidays all over the world and a great social life. I asked her if she didn't mind telling me how much she earned. I pointed out to her that her pay was several thousand pounds above the national average at the time. She had no idea that she was actually much more privileged than many people. Because even though there were a huge number of people who earned a lot more than she did, there were far more who earned a lot less. That's how the national average was what it was. And we're even more aware of the poverty that people who are actually in work and earning a living actually live with when low income is one of the major reasons for the use of the food bank. At a practical level, the story Jesus tells asks us about what we need to live life in all its fullness and how we enable that for other people. It also asks us how generous do we understand God to be and in what ways do we emulate that and how open is the kingdom we work for to the people we deem to be unworthy. Perhaps if we lived with the values of Jesus, then our lives would be in a manner worthy of the gospel. Loving God, help us to be concerned by those things that are important and fill us with hope that our belief in your love and our actions in your spirit may bring your kingdom ever closer. Amen. We sing together a hymn that was written in America, a hymn for Labour Day.
Pray for those who are hungry. Pray harder for those who will not feed them. Pray for those who struggle each week to pay their bills. Pray harder for the wealthy who do not care. Pray for those who are homeless. Pray harder for those who deny them shelter. Pray for the sick and lonely. Pray harder for those who will not give them comfort. Pray for those who cry out for dignity. Pray harder for those who will not listen. Pray for those oppressed by unjust wages. Pray harder for those who exploit them. Pray for those who bear the yoke of prejudice. Pray harder for those who discriminate against them. Pray for those whose basic needs are denied. Pray harder for public officials who cater to the greedy and ignore those bound unjustly. Amen. Amen. We sing together the hymn, O Lord, all the world belongs to you. each other with the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God go with you in all that is gentle, Christ go with you in all that is brave, and the Spirit go with you in all that is freeing. Go in peace, the love of God, and serve our God. Thank you.